Thanks for joining us on Nationwide today on the network service of the NTA. I'm Elizabeth Omori. Now, the operatives of the Niger police have rearrested the notorious kidnap kingpin Al Haji Hamisu Bala Wadu, arrested in the late hours of yesterday, 19th of August 2019, in his hideout in Kano State. The police had been on the massive manhunt for the suspect Al Haji Hamisu Bala Wadume since 6th of August 2019, following the unfortunate incident in Ibi Taraba State, which resulted in the brutal murder of three police officers and two civilians, and injury of five others. The suspect, who was appropriately restrained at the time of the incident, was subsequently released by his rescuers, rescuers after they had destroyed the restraining handcuffs. A statement by the First Public Relations Officer DCP Frank Umba stated that the Inspector General of Police, IGP Mohamed Adamo, while commending the police operatives for their perseverance and painstaking efforts, has expressed his profound gratitude to all Nigerians for their unparalleled show of love and empathy to the force and the families of the officers and patriotic civilians who paid the supreme price in the service of their fatherland. It is his belief that the rearrest of the suspect Al-Haji Hamiso Bala Wadumi will no doubt help in bringing answers to the numerous but hitherto unanswered questions touching on the incident and the larger criminal enterprise of the suspect. Now to the judiciary, the Supreme Court has struck out an appeal by the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, on the party's inability to reply the objection of the APC at the presidential election petitions court. This appeal comes from APC's challenge of the competence of the PDP's Petition at the tribunal. The five man panel, led by Justice Dajito Muhammad, wrote that Atiku's reply was filed out of time. Olabodi Arewa reports. The appeal was filed at the apex court by Atiku Abubakar and his party, the People's Democratic Party, to challenge the ruling of the presidential election petition court, which held that the petitioners did not file a response to an application by the All Progressives Congress. Counsel to the PDP, Eita Jegede, senior advocate of Nigeria, argued that Atiku Abubaka was still within the time frame. Counsel to President Muhammad Dubari, Wale Olani Kweku SCN, and counsel to INEC, Ustaz Usman SCN, argued that granting Atiku's prayer was of no value since the presentation of evidence at the tribunal had closed. Adoption of final addresses by all the parties has been slated for Wednesday in Abuja or Labodarewa. NCA News. An election stakeholders have met in Abuja for the presentation of a report of the Monitoring and Evaluation Situation Room, which is a compilation of evidence materials for the 2019 presidential and senatorial elections by the Presidential Support Committee. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo in a message says that All Progressives Congress Party is putting in place measures to improve the living conditions of Nigerians and boost infrastructural development in the country. Harman Jabani reports. The general elections were held in Nigeria on February 23, 2019 to elect the president, vice president and members of the National Assembly. Six months after the polls, findings from these elections have been handed over to the vice president by the Presidential Support Committee. The committee, which works with the Directorate of Programs and Consultation, Office of Senior Special Assistant to the President on Political Matters believes that the reports will assist the party in its court cases across the country. At the time judgment is pronounced and the opposition party says this is not right, we have something to present and say by what we have presented, these are facts, 
in the field across the states and as such um, nobody contend with proofs especially when the evidence are beyond facts vice president osipajo who was represented commended the group for the sacrifice and effort towards the growth of the party the way does in research the way does in a better understanding of the even why the um, elections came out the way it did. They were with us in planning for the future. They were with us in compiling data. They will certainly go into our database. Chairman of the committee says the document contains 70 pages of election reports, 40 pages of pictorial, and 30 pages of statistical evidence from all the states of the country, including Abuja. Hamad Jabani, NTA News. Now to the case of Senator Elisha Abo, who is standing trial in Zuba Magistrate Court for allegedly assaulting a lady has been stalled for the third time due to the absence of the senator in court. The senator is said to be suffering from acute febrile, a pathogenic infection, and is currently admitted in a hospital in Adamawa. On resuming from the last adjourned date, the shorty to the senator informed the court on the development and also submitted medical report and pictures showing that the senator is in a hospital bed receiving treatment. With this development, the defense counsel sought for adjournment to enable his client recuperate and also study the documents intended to be used as evidence in the trial which was served to him this morning by the prosecution, prosecutor. On our part, we were ready. We came to court. We have served the uh, the necessary materials for our, uh, for the prosecution, uh, and uh, that is the one available to us uh, uh, and the one presented. And uh, we were expecting, and we came to court with our witnesses. Even the IPO of the case is ready too, and uh, the nominal complainant is also in court to have opened the case. Uh, the case. I am not God. And there's no way I can say a sick person will be in court. But what I know is that he is desirous to be in court. Even today, he is desirous, if not, if not for the fact that he is done, he is desirous to be in court today. So I know he will do everything possible within his power, everything possible to be in court at the next agenda because it's a serious matter. He doesn't want to take it lightly. But the problem, the, why I cannot guarantee you 100% is that I am not going. It's God that owns the power of life and death. Well, the case has been adjourned to the 24th of September. To other matters now, as Nigerians eagerly wait, await the inauguration of the cabinet that will drive the next level agenda of Buhari administration, the ministers designate have been advised to imbibe the principles of teamwork and patriotism, especially in policy implementation. The advice was given by guests on Good Morning Nigeria while discussing the presidential retreat and next level agenda. It came in Williams has details. An extraordinary effort towards a unanimous journey to the next level. The retreats organized at the instance of President Mohamed Buhari is to provide ministers designate with the roadmap for the next level agenda. The government has big aspirations to lift a large section of the Nigerian population out of poverty. However, to attain this fit and meet the reverberating expectations of Nigerians, guests on Good Morning Nigeria advise ministers designate to consider the retreat as an agenda-setting environment and a people-centered service. It's not a tea-drinking affair. The country is faced with so many problems. The retreat is expected to draw out the presidential vision, mission statement, and strategies of accomplishing this, this, uh, the, the tax. The guests applauded the caliber of appointees, but call for delineation of duties. Once the principles, framework, and due processes are followed, and people do their work in accordance with laid down procedures, then the level of friction will become low. For example, there are salary differentials. Who signs memo to council? Who makes presentation to council? It's, of course, the full minister. But some ministers who are ministers of state sometimes don't want to accept this situation. From the caliber of people that I see, I don't think, and I hope there won't be such frictions 
uh, coming up. They also suggested a presidential monitoring team and a gang chat that will constantly access and evaluate performance in line with the next level agenda. In Abuja, Ekemeni Williams, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. Let's take a break now. The news continues shortly. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening and watching. They are there ready in the sky above and the waters below. In the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. <laughs> Community policing in the face of insecurity in Nigeria is the thrust this week on NTA Tuesday Live. The program every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. promises to be educative and incisive. Don't miss it. You can follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook at NTA Network News. Instagram at NTA Network. Twitter at NTA News Now. YouTube at NTA News Online. All visit www.nta.ng For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng slash live. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad, or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can beat the rich. <laughs> Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first, get it fresh. Thanks for staying with us. Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has refuted allegations in some quarters that operatives of the commission raided the residence of former Governor of Lagos State, Akiomi Ambodi. A statement by the acting head media and publicity of EFCC, Tony Oriladi, says the EFCC did not raid Ambodi's house. It is instructive that his administration, like other former governors, is under investigation since they no longer constitutionally enjoy immunity against prosecution. He therefore stated that whatever the, the Commission is presently doing with regards to the investigation is in line with its mandate and the, true, and the rule of law. Oriladi wants the public to know that the Commission does not carry out investigation on pages of the newspaper or through the media. He said operations are also covered until a time when they are in court. All right, up. Uh, Humanitarian crisis resulting from insurgency, communal conflicts and other mutual dis natural disasters have been posing threats to human existence. The global efforts in stemming the tide of the menace has continued to prefer solutions to the grand challenge. Correspondent Ilyasu Yakubu examines the yearly world humanitarian celebration that brings together experts to brainstorm on the way forward. Nigeria, like the other parts of the world, has been faced with a series of humanitarian challenges that resulted in the death of many. The outbreak of insurgency and other forms of crisis subjected many to difficulties. A 10-year-old Mohammed Habib and his kid sister Zara are victims of displacement from insurgency in Bama, Borno State. These two, among other victims of insurgency, got out of Bama town without their parents. I appreciate this gesture. The good news is that the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, took charge of them on arrival in IDP camps. 
These humanitarian efforts, complemented by other humanitarian bodies, has led credence to the yearly celebration of Humanitarian Day celebration. We need to collaborate, we need to come together, we need to partner with the various structures in place to be able to eradicate this humanitarian crisis. I am confident that the resource persons and panelists in this symposium will do justice to this theme. At the end, I expect that fresh ideas and perspectives will emerge in order to chart a new course in delivery of humanitarian services in this country and beyond. As part are of the view that Nigeria must face headlong the growing threats of humanitarian crisis for better society. In Abuja, Eliasu Aliakubu, NTA News. Time now to link up Rukaya in our Kaduna Network Center for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Rukaya. Hello, Elizabeth. Good to see you. Welcome to Kaduna. Kaduna State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal has concluded its pre-judgment proceedings with the adoption of written addresses from parties to the matter. The report. The Governorship Election Petition Tribunal had on July 25th adjourned hearing after taking account of witnesses of all the three respondents in the petition filed by the People's Democratic Party, the PDP and its candidates. At the resumed sitting, all parties were given fair hearing in presenting their written addresses. PDP governorship candidate Isa Ashurukwadan seeks the tribunal to obtain the victory of Governor Nasri El Rafai on the grounds of alleged election irregularities. We await the judgment of uh, the tribunal. Whatever it is, then we know what next step to take. Meanwhile, the first and second respondent have prayed that the tribunal dismisses the petition on the grounds that the petitioners have not lived up to the standard expected of a petition. All the witnesses called by the petitioners failed woefully to prove the ingredients of the facts they relied upon in their petition. We also have filed written addresses giving the tribunal reasons why we think we should be the people to win. And the petitioners have also filed their own written addresses giving the tribunal reason why they should win. So this is what was adopted and each one urged the tribunal to see his position and make a decision in respect of what he had uh, uh, urged on the tribunal. The tribunal will fix the date for the judgment. Residents of flood-prone areas in Kaduna Metropolis are now living in first following prediction by relevant agencies and the rising level of water in River Kaduna. Ahmad Umar Kudan reports that some measures are in place to mitigate the impact of the flood in the event of any occurrence. His report. Over the years, Kigo Road, New Extension, Rapinguza, Angorimi and other communities along River Kaduna have been experiencing flood. The 2019 flood prediction indicates that some states of the Federation, Kaduna inclusive, may experience flooding around August and September. With the rainy season approaching its peak, the water level in the river is rising, posing another threat to the flood-prone communities. A visit by NTA News to the areas reveals that some people have already vacated their residence, while others remain adamant. So you, we, are, we have experienced it and you're supposed to pack or move to a better place, but we are still here, seeing it, that something will still come back, but you cannot move because why? You don't have money. It is when we see the flood, we don't plenty, we run out and hug for people, please. Where are they going to stay? That is a fear that a lot of them, not that they don't want to leave this place, but if they leave, where are they going? Kaduna State Emergency Management Agency says it has already identified temporary camps for likely victims of the flood. In fact, last weekend we fumigated some of the environment so that at least when it happened, though we don't pray for it to happen, but when it happens, the next line of action is to take our victims here. Stakeholders believe that relocation of residents from the flood plains to safer grounds and dredging of River Kaduna will mitigate the effects of the recurring flood in Kaduna. Ahmad Umar Kodang, NT News. 
and Chief of the Air Staff Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar has asked officers and men of the Nigerian Air Force to rededicate themselves to the fight against current and future threats to national security. Suleiman Abdullah Rigachkun reports that the Chief of the Air Staff gave the charge and the message to the inauguration of blocks of houses of, for Air Force personnel in Kaduna. His report. Aside enhancing innovation and skills of personnel, provision of critical infrastructure such as this set of houses is among major priorities of the present leadership of the Nigerian Air Force. A total of 326 flats have been built for 546 personnel of the Nigerian Air Force in the last four years. In a message to the inauguration, Chief of the Air Staff said the aim is to further motivate fighting forces to maintain the tempo of operations in tackling threats to national security. Projects like this were initiated on all map bases to ensure the provision of a conducive atmosphere for personnel at their various workplaces and homes in line with the change agenda of Mr. President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Nigeria. Appreciative of the gesture, beneficiaries pledge keeping the accommodation clean. Construction of more transit quarters are currently ongoing in Air Force bases across the country. In Kaduna, I am Suleiman Abdullah Hirigachikum, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Kaduna. It's back to Elizabeth in Abuja for continuation of Nationwide. Thank you so much, Rokea. Now, as reactions trail the misinterpretation of President Buhari's comments on the non-utilization of foreign exchange for the importation of food into the country, an economic analyst says the policy is not new, as the restrictions have helped in closing gaps harming the economy. Earlier, I had an interview with Professor Ken Ife, an economic analyst, on the development. Joining us now in the studio to shed more light on the issue before us is Professor Ken Ife, an economic analyst. It's nice to have you in our studio. Thank you very much. Thank All right, what is your take on the central bank governor's comments uh, regarding the importation of food and not food items? Well, the comment is not new. Okay. Because the policy is not new. The policy was in 2016 when the country was in dire straits. We had a central bank that its revenue, monthly revenue in dollars, dropped from $3.2 billion to $1 billion and had to face a request of $4.66 billion every month. So they tried everything they could, macro prudential measures, capital account control measures, it didn't work. And then they had to face demand management. Okay. And that was why they restricted those 43, 43 items. So what has happened today now is because the president is pushing more and giving more support and more emphasis and saying to CBN, go for 10 value chains. I want you to support that rigorously. Now, I'm strongly behind you more than ever on restricting Forex to some items of food import. But more items will go on the restriction list. How will this move improve our economy? Well, the, the idea is this. You are conserving as much forex as you have uh, so that you can support primary and, and priority imports like machineries, like arms, that things that we need, that the country needs more badly. Two, you are trying to support the growth of your own economy by creating employment and by increasing food supply. You know the reason why you still have inflation in, in, in double digit? It's simply because of agriculture. The food basket, sub-index, is still 13.1%, while the actual inflation has gone down to 11.1%. But the core inflation when you remove food basket is 88 .8. So yes. we should have long been in single digit. Of course. So this issue about food has to be tackled head on. And I think that is what is going on right now. The president has thrown support to particular value chains 10, and then says to CBM, please support this, and whatever it is, don't give, use your little scarce resource on importing these things that we know we can produce. So you are helping the demand side of the, of, the, of the equation, as well as the supply side. So supply of resource from intervention funds, CBN intervention funds, and then, and then demand, creating the demand by asking government agencies, you have to buy local, you have to support local. It does not use the word ban. I haven't had that. Restriction is the word. It's restriction. Restric even restriction is not even saying restrict the import. It's saying don't provide the forex you do not have. have. 
Okay. And there's no, no treaty that says you should. But integrity. With this policy on ground, which has been on ground for a very long time, do you see the issue of standardization being addressed? Of course, it's part of, it's, it's part of this in the mix. Okay. It is in the mix. You remember, the Anchor Borrowers Program works around an anchor who guarantees quality, who introduces the correct seedlings, and who trains the, the, the algae growers, and who helps them and supply them the correct fertilizer needed for the particular crop in the particular area, and then walk them through, and then repurchase all that was produced of good quality, and then either export or process for the market. So there is quality assurance written all over the chain. So, you know, it's, it's not in isolation. It is not in isolation. Do we see food sufficiency for yes. the future? Yes, yeah. food sufficiency is a moving target because we produce over 100 million metric tons of food. And they're talking about different things. We have sogum, millet, uh, rice, that very thing. I know that rice, we are very close to that. Very but, close. But there are many other value chains uh, that we are focusing on to ensure food sufficiency. But I have to tell you that it's still a moving target because what of the, one of the challenges that we have is that our agroecological footprint is shrinking because of the conflict in the northeast okay. and then the banditry in the northwest, then the, the crisis in the middle belt, that the farmer, the farmer had a crisis. Of course, you have other types of forms of crisis in the south. But the thing is that why is this is going on and farmers are, are, are percolating into IDP camps, they are dissuaded from farming and then you still have to feed them. So it's the double whammy. Then, of course, your food is very cheap to all the people surrounding you, the French countries. Yes. And they, because it's cheap, they're buying them. So, so trailers and trailers, hundreds of them are crossing the border with food that is cheap. And so they're buying them. So we are, we are having the knock-on effect that food basket prices are going up. So, mm -hmm. but we could do more. But that is about mechanization and uh, you all, more science and technology are coming into food production. All right. But you also want to make sure that the market is going to be there for the things we are producing. All right. So, Ken Ife there on the foreign exchange policy. Now, let's now take you to Oyo State, where the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Oyo Command, has adopted an initiative through information technology. Abola Ogunlano reports that the facility is situated at the headquarters of the command in Ibadan. The growing challenge of security in Nigeria is of concern to all. Hence, effort is ongoing to combat this challenge. Sequel to the above, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, or your command, flags of a smart security information technology center to enhance the capacities of its officers and men in combating cybercrime and to monitor the environment. It's already selling them out to the Nigerian market that we are out to help Nigeria to combat the security challenges that we are facing at the moment. Members of the Corps, they will never abuse the privilege given to them. Because there's a slogan in our uh, organization that they uh, collect bribe and die, that with that instinct in us, so they are good to go. Zona commander of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, Zone F, ACG Chem of Bafai, said the ICT will avail the officers' opportunity to function to the maximum capacity from Ibado. Adebola Gunano, NTA News. Away from security, the need to equip judges and prepare them on the best global practices in handling cases, as well as promote good governance in Nigeria, has been reacted as the United Kingdom partners Niger State Government in training judges of the lower bench. Sulaiman Kodogi reports that this came to the fore as stakeholders, including the governors of Niger and Sokoto states, as well as the former head of state, General Abdusalami Abubakar, converged on MENA. The five-day judicial training is jointly sponsored by the Department for International Development, London, the Judicial College, London, and the Niger State Government. Declaring the workshop open, Niger State Governor Abuba Kasani Bello maintained that his administration has continued to enjoy cordial working relationship with other arms of government, which informed the collaboration. Even as his Sokoto State counterpart, Governor Amin Waziri Tambal described the initiative as the best way to go. It's about um, capacity building, uh, it's, a, it's, it's about best practices, uh, and judiciary uh, is about keeping up to date what is happening global wise. It's very important for them to be up to speed uh, with the current trend of not only legal practice but uh, 
but, 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 but best practices in the world. Chairman of the occasion and former head of state, General Absalami Abubakar, who lauded the initiative called for its sustainers. It is very, very necessary that uh, people are well trained how to dispense justice because without justice, there wouldn't be any peace. Chief Judge of Niger State, Justice Muhammad Ali Mayaki, who underscores some of the achievements recorded in the state judiciary, appreciated the government, adding that the training will encourage them to competently and professionally discharge their functions. Earlier, the lead trainer from the Judicial College, London, Richard Cobb, who dwelt on some areas of coverage in the course of the training, disclosed that it will also hold in other states of the Federation. That judicial training is essential to ensure the highest standards of competence and performance. 80 magistrates and district court judges from Niger State are participating in the training aimed at keeping them abreast to perform their professional and judicial functions effectively. In Mina, Suleiman Kodogi, NTA News. And from Maka, the National Hatch Commission of Nigeria has cautioned Nigerian pilgrims over violation of immigration laws as they are with their return from Saudi Arabia. Nakan Commissioner representing North Northeast, Dan Juma Saliu, gave the caution when he visited Baltistic pilgrims in Maka. Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed reports. Now that the 2019 Hajj has formally ended and pilgrims await their turn to be lifted back home, the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria is working around the clock with State Pilgrims Board to ensuring that all Nigerian pilgrims return home without any abscondment. This is evident with the visit of Nakan officials to Nigerian pilgrims in their accommodation in Makkah. National Commissioner representing North East Njuma Saliu Usman led a team of Nakan officials to Bauchi State Pilgrims. We have led them a uh, successful completion of their hats and then we condole them because Bochi lost two programs. Uh, after that, we talked to them about, about the program of, the, of our return journey to Nigeria. We told them that there's a policy on ground that, which uh, usually uh, first, first in, first out. Uh, pilgrims are scolding themselves from Saudi Arabia, which is a great offense. They advise us to make sure that no pilgrims should ask himself. The way we come is the way we are going to go back to our own country. Pilgrims were, however, advised to take advantage of their stay in Mecca and pray for peace and progress in Nigeria. From Mecca, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Mahmoud Ibn Muhammad, NTA News. Let's now be my such light on education. As a way of giving back to the society, the Omo Ajorosun Club distributed free big notebooks to students of 12 selected public secondary schools in Ibadan. Daya Ogunlano reports that each school got 2,000 copies of the exercise books. Ajorosun Club of Ibadan Highlands Chapter said the gesture is part of the general objective of the club to contribute to the development of their home community as indigents for your state. It's part of our program to assist government. Any government of the day is our friend. We are friend to every government. Purposely organize ourselves uh, in order to elevate our community. And that is Ibadan. We will monitor one, see that those books are put to the use for which they are designated. Oyo State Commission of Education, Professor Daoud Sagudui, expressed optimism that such intervention will head learning in the state. He assured the club members that the current administration in Oyo State is determined to reposition education. All hands must be on deck. Now our government is using the PPP to drive education and other sectors for us to be able to deliver education properly. In you're watching Nationwide and NCA. at us take another break. Stay tuned. The Nigerian national flag is a sacred national symbol. It is a mark of patriotism and a show of love for our nation to fly the national flag correctly, in the right colors, right dimension, and in the right sizes for each occasion. In recent times, it has been noticed that government offices, corporate organizations, banks, embassies, and other notable institutions 
fly, faded, shredded, and haggard looking versions of the national flag. This is rank and must stop. It has also been noticed that some citizens prefer to popularize the national flag of other nations. Fellow countrymen and women, let us be patriotic. Come let us show love for our motherland. Fly the correct versions of our national flag in all relevant places. Be patriotic. Be proud ambassadors of our great country. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Thanks for staying with us. Now let's talk technology. The Nigerian Society of Engineers is complementing the efforts of the federal government in stemming the tide of insecurity in Nigeria. To this end, a locally fabricated integrated test and design center has been suggested where satellite-based devices can be developed to clamp down terrorists before the strike. This was at a lecture in honor of the first female chairman of the Nigerian Institute of Civil Engineers in Abuja. As threats to lives and property become asymmetric in nature with the use of conventional and sophisticated equipment by bandits, pipeline vandals, terrorists, kidnappers and robbers, Nigerian engineers are charting a way forward on how to combat insecurity in the nation. Engineer Lassisi is a satellite communications and space systems expert and he says leveraging on space technology devices such as the GPSR trackers, navigation satellites and drones will help demobilize violent groups before the attack. Recently we're having incessant collapse of buildings. How can we mitigate against this? You can utilize deformation monitoring services of GNSS that like to detect when a bridge, a dam, a high-rise building is no longer safe for human life. So there could be early warning to evacuate. So it means these drones can be deployed to areas of that are susceptible to all these havocs. And through that we can get information to the control room. Others buttressed on the need for the Defense Space Administration and other relevant space agencies to deploy the tools in line with the executive order on Nigerian Content Development Initiative. Look at our space resources, share experiences, chart a way into the future. We are asking government and all the stakeholders to explore engineering means to solve this issue, most especially insecurity. It is the opinion of the experts here that the federal government finance the utilization of the space devices in order to enhance the efforts of the Nigerian military in conquering insurgency and other homeland crimes. Honor was bestowed on the first female chairman of the Nigerian Institute of Civil Engineers, Aisha to Ali Umar, for her doggedness towards the engineering profession. In and away from technology, roads are major indices for the socio-economic development in any society. For the people of Obudu, local government area of Cross River State, the dual carriage road constructed by the state government has taken their community to a higher level. Umo Basi Edit has details. Sections 67 and 70 of the Nigerian Oil and Gas Industry Content Act mandates the Nigerian Content Development Monitoring Board to update stakeholders on development, policies and responsibilities towards meeting the targets set in the Act. This is the crux of this gathering. The key rewards from the implementation 
of a 10-year roadmap are the creation of 300,000 jobs from industry activities and the retention of about $14 billion in country out of the average $20 billion annual spend in the oil and gas industry. Issues around compliance and enforcement, technical capabilities of indigenous companies, level of investment among others were also given attention. The Walter Smith refinery is on track for completion in May 2020, while the Azikel will be completed in 2021. We expect about 300,000 liters of diesel daily, in addition to various volumes of naphtha, kerosene, and fuel oil from Walter Smith. While Ezekiel will produce about 1.5 million liters or 50 trucks of petrol daily, including 170 liters of diesel and other products when completed. The 10-year roadmap has technical capability development, compliance and enforcement, enabling business environment, organization capability, sectorial and regional market linkage with funding, regulatory environment, collaborations, stakeholders engagement, as well as research and development as key enablers. In Abuja, Benny Adams, NTA News. We apologize for that mix-up. That was a report on NCDNB Media Chat. Moving on, two new HIV warning to rapid test kits have been evaluated and recommended to be among the first line test kits for use in Nigeria. This brings to the number of rapid test kits already available to five. Chimdema Undobisi tells us more. Many unvalidated HIV rapid test kits we are reported to be all over the country, a situation believed to have resulted in misdiagnosis. To ensure standard and accurate HIV diagnosis, the Ministry of Health instituted an appropriate process for evaluating HIV rapid test kits before public use, in line with World Health Organization standard, which makes it mandatory for sensitivity of the kits to be 99%, while specificity should be 98%. Now, two new HIV rapid test kits, one with the capacity to detect both HIV and syphilis, about to be made available, were evaluated using blood samples collected from the six geopolitical zones. We ended up with well over a thousand samples that we used so that we can represent all the strains of HIV that exist. The results of the evaluation shows that instant HIV 1 and 2 have specificity and sensitivity of 99.7% respectively. While instant multiplex HIV 1 and 2, syphilis antibody, have sensitivity and sensitivities of 100% respectively. The Ministry of Health sees introduction and availability of more rapid test kits as measures to increase self-testing. This is as the country intensifies efforts at meeting the UN AIDS global 1990-90 target of ensuring 90% of infected people know their status, 90% of them placed on treatment, and viral load of 90% of those on treatment suppressed by 2030. In Abuja, Chimdema Ndibisi, NTA News. Still on health, the U.S. President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, administered by the U.S. Center for Disease Control and U.S. Agency for International Development, is implementing an antiretroviral treatment surge program in Rivers State to approximately 180,000 people living with HIV who have not previously received surge. Ambassador W.S. Simonton led a U.S. delegation to a courtesy visit to Rivers State. Rivers State Governor Nielsen Wike in Port Harcourt to highlight the U.S. government's 
$75 million budget increase for HIV contractivities in Nigeria, with about $25 million allocated for the antiretroviral treatment surge activities. The initiative is to advocate the elimination of user fees for all people living with HIV, antenatal care charges for pregnant women living with the virus and other barriers, hindering people living with HIV from accessing health services in order to live a normal and healthy life. Used to watching Nationwide, let's take a break now. We'll be right back. The Nigerian national flag is a sacred national symbol. It is a mark of patriotism and a show of love for our nation to fly the national flag correctly, in the right colors, right dimension, and in the right sizes for each occasion. In recent times, it has been noticed that government offices, corporate organizations, banks, embassies, and other notable institutions fly faded, shredded, and haggard-looking versions of the national flag. This is wrong and must stop. It has also been noticed that some citizens prefer to popularize the national flag of other nations. Fellow countrymen and women, let us be patriotic. Come let us show love for our motherland. Fly the correct versions of our national flag in all relevant places. Be patriotic. Be proud ambassadors of our great country. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news, don't create it, don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Glad to know you're still there. Now, roads are major indices for the social economic development in any society. For the people of Obodo, local government area of Cross River State, the dual carriage road constructed by the state government has taken their community to a higher level. Or more, Bas Edit has details. Before now, the people of Obudu community had been thrown into untold hardship following the deplorable condition of their roads. Today, the story is different as the road which leads to one of the state story sites, the Obudu Cattle Ranch Resort, wears a new look. Not only being a dual carriage road, street lights adorn the road, thereby improving the aesthetics of the community. When you check out the development now in Obudu, we are proud of Obudu. We are, we are comparing Obudu now to London. He done a lot. We, nobody can even talk about it. Governor Ben Ayadi said the project would help check rural urban migration in the area. Truly, truly, this road is intended to serve the Obudu Ranch, to bring back life to the ranch. People think that the ranch is dying. The ranch is dying for the things that, that keep killing any city, any project that is stranded. Residents say apart from linking Obudu to other communities, the dual carriage road will also bring more development to the area. Umo Basadet, NTA News. To legislative matters, the Conference of Speakers of State Houses of Assembly has been held in Lagos with a focus on how to attain financial autonomy by the legislative arm of government in states. Deputy Speaker, House of Representatives, Hakman Idris Wase, are the opening urged the speakers to save the local government system from imminent collapse. Babatunde Saiki reports. The conference affords speakers the opportunity to discuss widely on legislative matters as it affects their respective states. 
It is also an opportunity to deliberate on issues bordering on financial autonomy and capacity building. The Deputy Speaker, House of Representatives, Ahmed Idris Wasi, emphasized the need for skillful display of intellectual inputs, which he said requires acquisition of knowledge through training, workshops, and retreats. The local government is the most crucial tier of government, and I believe together we we'll put our hands together in deck on deck to ensure we'll take them out the shackles. Chairman, conference of speakers represented by the Speaker Taraba State House of Assembly appealed to relevant authorities in government to effect implementation of the financial autonomy of the legislature, which the president had already assented to. The one we know is the one signed by Mr. President, and that's the one that is being uh, recognized by the Constitution. So um, ours is to see that, uh, to ensure that this provision is being implemented. If they are not well equipped, if they are lacking in capacity on how to make law, on most of these fundamental issues, we won't be able to realize any good governance in Nigeria. It gives us um, leverage to act independently. You know, when you act independently, you are free, you are liberated. More than 25 speakers attended the roundtable conference in Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. Let's shift attention to transportation. The Accident Investigation Bureau, AIB Nigeria, is expanding its services with the aim of enhancing safety of the transportation sector in the country. AIB Commissioner Akin Olatero at a media briefing in Lagos says the extension of its investigations to other subsectors of the transport industry is in line with current global practices. Records from the National Bureau of Statistics and the Federal Safety Corps indicate that no fewer than two lives are lost on Nigerian roads every four hours, while according to the report, about 20,000 of the about 11.6 million vehicles in the country are involved in accidents. Between January of 2013 to June 2018, more than 28,000 lives were lost to road traffic accidents. The Multimodal Accident Investigation is regarded as an important tool to reducing road crashes in Nigeria. To be a gradual process, we need to first of all ensure maximum utilization of what we have first before we do a proper need assessment, whether we're going to increase our points or we're good at these four points. We will take on some rail staff from Nigerian Railways, the same with uh, Maritime. We will take on some of the staff and train them on how to investigate an uh, um, accident properly. Keeping the skies, roads, railways, and waterways safe, the AIB commissioner advocated required research and development of these subsectors of the transportation industry, as well as adequate funding. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. Into sports, 12 African Games declared open amidst fanfare in Rabat, Morocco. Olumide Eguntola tells us more on.